everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, you'll have to forgive my voice a bit. I got sick a couple days ago, and during that time I've kind of lost my voice, but hopefully we can move right on through this. Alright, we're coming back to a radio that i uh, probably just given a bit of analysis to, uh, along with the console style radio. Uh, this is your Motorola uh, 65L11 and we just kind of did analysis of it so we can get a uh, a good price point uh, quote for essentially a repair we're not fully restoring this thing this is a make it work only kind of thing so uh, I'm only going to get as far as what's needed in order for this radio to safely operate uh, again uh, if I have to dig into, say, the tuner on it or anything like that, that's getting into um, more of a restoration type piece. Any of the cosmetics would definitely be more of a restoration. I uh, will do a bit of cleaning to clean it up, but uh, the predominant theme for this radio is uh, to restore it or to make it operational, I guess, really. But uh, after that analysis kind of went um, back and just you can see on this document here uh, tested took a look at all of our filter uh, paper full type capacitors highlighted them tested all of our resistors and any of the resistors that were uh, you know, 10% out of tolerance or greater uh, or 10% out from their tolerance or greater uh, and, decide to highlight them and those will be replacing as well uh, so did a quote for the components that need to be replaced you know when it comes to those uh, paper full style capacitors um, you know it's possible that if this is a low uh, low use set hasn't been used very much that they could be good but we're just not going to risk it because of the type of capacitors they are in the age there they will if they are not already going to present issues down the road and there's some safety things that we'll have to address as well I'll place power cord on this uh, and get a proper uh, cross the line cap put in to lower our current to our uh, chassis and some other things too well that's the basis you know highlighted everything to the customer they were pretty happy with the quote so we can move into getting this thing uh, back functional all right so what I've done for now is I went ahead and started removing the tubes got these two out I'll work on getting these two out as well this is a uh, one two three four five six tube set and uh, Slightly different style tubes than the last ones that we worked with, but uh, just gotta be careful. This whole uh, shielding across this entire wire is going, we'll probably have to replace this. There's a lot of wires in here that we're definitely going to replace. See all the corrosion on this coil here. It's probably going to get cleaned up. Hopefully, that doesn't mess up the ability for the radio to receive too badly since this is going to our physical tuner element over here which is also in bad shape like i said if this has to get rebuilt or anything like that we're definitely getting into restoration territory which i am actively trying to avoid uh because the individual does not want a restoration they just want it to work and sometimes you it's it's a bit of a blend between the two to call what's the restoration what's the what's just getting it to work well <laughs> uh, i think it depends on how pretty you want it is really what a restoration is but getting it to work is i'll be honest with you sometimes that is the bulk of uh of your work is in, on the electronic side so you can see the uh this top comes off and then you just kind of rock and these come out 
we're going to have to get these tubes out of this uh, the shielding. Uh, it appears that there are just tabs where they've been slightly bent over. Be hard for you to see, but down in there. We'll try to straighten out those tabs to see if that releases the, the tube from inside the socket, and then we can get inside of here cleaned up. They're all crusted and everything. Good news is, is our back cover for this gives us our placement of our tubes so it's not like it's going to be hard to figure out where they go back it's, it's pretty simple but i won't get the tubes out anyways just so i can clean in here a little bit and uh get these tubes tested before i start replacing the other components so hopefully we can determine which ones are actually good and which ones are bad there we go got it all right if you notice all these shieldings, minus this one seems to be missing it, have this kind of rubber insulation on it. Now my assumption is, is that, um, is it possible that these actually are part of one of these pins for the ground for the tube or going to the chassis? I don't know, but if that's the case, that's understandable why this rubber is on there because you don't want that shorting out against, uh, any of these IF cans or anything adjacent to it. So we'll at least have all these tubes out and I'll figure out how to get the shielding out. Boom, this is step one. Get some cleaning done. Come back once there's more for me to, to show. Okay, getting them out was a bit easier than I was expecting went ahead and all these cases uh, used a silver sharpie marker to annotate which ones were inside of where but uh, essentially and they've cleaned up rather nice I've already cleaned up the uh, vacuum tubes a tad bit per se so we can test them so 1h5 GT obviously wasn't the one that went in here but um, yeah, essentially all I needed to do is I just kind of took my Sharpie marker and I put it on the end of the tube here, right here where the it was uh, the wires were running to, and I just applied pressure and it started to slide outward. So they were able to come out that way. I didn't have to bend those metal tabs, and it's probably a good thing I did because you can see that they're actually part of the tube. So, but with them all out and out of the way, you see this lovely mess of mouse particles, poop particles, and other things in here. So, already sick and lost my voice. Uh, hopefully, I don't get sicker and, and lose more of my voice. But we're going to try to get this cleaned up a bit. Nah, uh, we'll get these uh, uh, tubes tested out. Tube testing time. I've got a Syncor TC109 uh, tube tester. You've probably seen it briefly in other videos. Um, if I go to live stream, this actually needs to be recapped and some additional work done to it. So I might do that over a live stream since hitting 1k views. But uh, it does work as is, but it definitely needs some work. But uh, you know, you just find the tube that you're looking to test and it tells you your A, B, C, and D setting and then what socket you're supposed to use. And obviously, I uh, have to put this adapter on the top because of the top, type of tube it is. Some things require a little bit of common sense, I suppose. But, uh, let's see, A should be set to 1, B up here on... F, you can see that right there. F. Let's see, C is on five. It's kind of rubbed off, but four, five. And then D is on H. We've got G, H, K, H. Okay. Now, let me just go ahead and turn this on. 
tad bit of inrush current there. 116 should be good enough. Anyway, you can hear it humming. That's why I said it needs a bit of work. See how our emissions do. They're coming up pretty good. I mean, we're over over 60, 70 on the emissions test. So this tube might be feasible for us. Let's check our grid leakage. And yeah, we're we're way down in the good. Now I did notice that um, there's a note here that says disregard shorts. I don't know if that's for the one and two above it or if it's representative of uh, the ones below it specifically. Could be below it. We go to short test. This light shouldn't stay on, but it looks like we are getting a short on H. Yeah, I can feel the chassis humming on this thing. Same thing on K. Out, out, out. Yeah, so H and K grid leakage is up. Let's should go back down. Let's turn it off. There we go. Yeah, we'll see if the other one. Uh, this was the one in. What was this one? One in five GT G. We'll uh, check the other one to see if it funk does the same thing. Alright. Emissions. Might take this one a little bit longer to warm up. doesn't look like it's going to budge at all. This tube might. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we'll loosen the socket. Same thing. Same characteristics, so it's probably it's probably good. Short test. Not getting anything on H or K this time. It doesn't stay on, so that. First two might actually be bad. This one's actually reading, showing a little bit better. Bought a tube online. We'll we'll compare it with a uh, with one I bought online. It should be a no good. Okay, here goes the one I got online from a tube supplier. We'll set this one over here for right now since that one seems to be. Pretty good. Uh, there we go. And let's check this one. Missions seem to be pretty much still the same. So 
right around that 70. Leakage low. And yeah. Yeah, we're going to say that this tube is bad and we've got some permanent shorts on it. So we're not going to put that one back in the radio. Mark it as bad and get it out of here. All right, up next we have our 3Q5. Let me double check. Yeah, 3Q5 GT. Okay, get this out of the way. Uh, but, uh, all right, let's check the emissions on it. Of course, our reset is 3D. I think that was 7 and then D again, according to the diagram. But uh, emissions appear to be coming up slowly. Kind of in that questionable range. So 60, we'll see if that's good. Let's go to leakage test. Doesn't look like it's running off at all. 60, it's hovering in the bottom half of the good. Short test, no permanent short sign. Yeah, flash is okay. It's when it stays on this bad. A, B, C, D. So I'm just going to compare this one with one I bought offline from a supplier. If it measures the same, then we'll call this too good. Okay, again, here goes a one I purchased online, 3Q5. Let's take out this old one. We'll get this one in there. And we'll just see how it looks. RCA brand versus Sylvania. It's coming up pretty quick. That's telling me it's probably going to be around the same spot. Actually, this one's a bit lower. Hmm. I mean, it's in the questionable area if you're dead over top. I mean, it's kind of just above the bad line. So it might just be that these tubes read lower. Again, like I said, until we've recapped and done a bit of work on this. Um, Put it over in there. Come on, short test. Alright. I haven't calibrated this either, so. And no permanent shorts. B, C, D. We're going to say that this uh, sold one's good. Alright, so up next we have the R187. I've done my presets. Let's see what we get. She comes right on up. Seems to be a pretty strong tube. I like to hang out here in this grid leakage area just for a little bit because I'd noticed on that old radio, the first video series that I did, 
there was one tube that eventually I had to replace once I got in this or recommend for a replacement because when it set here it measured low initially and then it just ran off and I think that I was causing some of the some issues with the radio even though it's still working uh, anyways uh, do we have any permanent shorts a B C D E G H yeah no everything seems to be good A B C D it's a nice healthy strong tube manufacturer on this uh, 1A7 is Concord it's the first time I've made in USA first time I've ran across that uh, manufacturing brand again I'm pretty novice to these radios so 97 GT I'm used to seeing RCA in Sylvania from the few that I've done but we'll put this over here in a good category and we've got our last tube that we need to check. Uh, what is this one? Our 1H5 GT. Okay, 1H5. It's actually giving us two D and H for D. We'll do D and then we'll do H. I mean, I don't know what else to do. Being, a, you know, not as schooled on these things as a lot of other people are. But, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's check the emissions on it. Okay, it seems to be good there. Grid leakage, low. for short not getting any let me put this from D E F G H because that was the other one double check H one H six. Wait a second, what is this one again? One H five. Yeah. The other one was H. We'll do this test again there. Let's see, it's not me getting over whatever this was. Kids, too. Here, my two year old coughing in the other room. Yeah, again. Seems to be a really healthy tube. We can put that one over in a good category as well. Alright. So that's all our tubes checked. Minus 11. Uh, sorry. Let me get this into camera. 117Z6. Which I won't be able to test. So this guy will have to be checked inside the radio. Once we're able to get it powered up. Okay, tubes checked, and what I went ahead and also did was uh, kind of lightly sand down the inside of these uh, the shielding to ensure that you know it's not rust contacting the uh, metal portion of the tube, but it's actually metal on metal. I labeled these just for my convenience. And this one was missing its shielding and had a little rubber thing and this one's was broke so wrapped a little bit of uh electrical tape to kind of make my own one here and 
electrical tape around this one to keep it held together but anyways went ahead and put these knobs back on so that way once it's time to actually uh you know turn it on and tune it we have the ability to do that uh and then cleaned up the chassis just a smidge again this is a get it working kind of thing not a restoration so went around just might have to polish these a little bit better send them a little bit better but they clean up everything in here a little bit so with all that being said and currently done now i'm going to turn my attention over to the chassis here actually our underside of our chassis and again uh recapping job Um, these battery cables for the battery ter terminals, I'll take photos of them, but I'm going to remove all that. There's no sense in keeping it. Uh, I will give these back to him. So, in the future, if he wants to use batteries, we can reconnect them and stuff. I'll make sure to take enough photos of how everything went. But uh, these are, all the wires are crumbling to pieces. And we don't have these style batteries, so... Interesting enough, the way that these uh, terminals worked on here, okay, is you have your wire that runs up into the terminal and then uh, it's soldered through the terminal. So you can kind of see where it's a bit open. Maybe I can bring it in the picture here. See how this is a bit open in there? But anyways, so I'll show you a good backside. There was the back side. These are actually very good solid connections. Uh, on the restoration I'm currently doing for that multimeter, the uh, socket for the rectifier, the components and wires were soldered into terminal posts like this. And I didn't realize that they were open on one side until I started feeding solder down into this while soldering the wire and the solder dropped out or spilled out a bit through the hole once it was heated up and landed in my lap and that didn't feel too pleasant but uh yeah uh let me begin re uh working on recapping this and then uh we'll come back and maybe be able to move into a test here soon all right i've gotten about four or five hours into this thing thus far including the previous work and starting on this recap and replacement of several resistors uh, you can see that modern components are like these orange drops here they're a lot smaller than previous ones uh, this is a 0.05 microfarad 4 and volt caps in here I've already disconnected this other end from here where this orange drop is sitting so just need to get it here and then solder in this orange drop uh, capacitor. But I'm finding it a lot easier. I used a lot of solder wick, the previous radio, trying to remove solder off of these uh, terminal posts. But I'm finding it a lot easier to actually use a solder sucker, get the terminal post heated up, and then this over top of the solder, and then pressing it to suck up the solder once it's loose. I think I've dropped a bit in there. That's fine. It will all get cleaned up once we're done. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a break. Probably get about a total of eight or nine hours into this today. Hopefully get the recap finished. But uh, we'll see how far we get. It's definitely not a single day job unless if you, you know, don't really care about how you put in your capacitors and your resistors, you know, if you were just J-hooking and putting or soldering the tap, the uh, ends of your leads into there, that's one thing. But I like to get out the old components, including their old leads, and then feeding the new leads through and getting them soldered in so they look. So there's a good bond between each uh, 
post in which you're terminating or soldering to and that if I'm going to put something with my name to it I'm going to take the extra time to, to solder things correctly uh, that being said yeah we're we're probably about mm, somewhere between the third to halfway done with this with this portion so uh, third to halfway done with the radio in, in total we're about third way done with our recap and uh, resistor replacement portion if I can put it that way but anyways I'm rambling so I'm gonna take a break and get myself to the gym hopefully lift, lifting some weights will help burn out the rest of this cold or whatever I'm dealing with and uh, get back to it okay workout and dinner is out of the way so I can get back to this for a little bit hopefully finishing up the replacing these caps and resistors before I call it quits for the night but um, I try to always think uh, a few steps ahead even though I you know you, you pay attention to what you're doing so you don't mess up you, you kind of have to think ahead how you want to work through things and because the bulk of components that need to be replaced is on this side and there was more room over here I figured I would just start here because our modern components are a lot smaller and then that would incrementally create us more room to work in um, one of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm working on this is you know our uh, electrolytics that are down there I'm not going to restuff the can this right here as well as with electrolytic you know this is going to be a highly contested area with components in it so it's going to be a bit iffy for me to figure out and then as well this capacitor right here um yeah, what is this size on what's our rating for this guy it is a 0.2 microfarad uh, 400 volts I think uh, either way you notice how we have this wire wrapping around here as well uh, let me show you what's going on with this inside the diagram okay and here it goes and it's being called an RF chuck you can see it right here um, so basically that wire wrapping is acting as an inductor over the uh, capacitor those old style uh, you know paper film capacitors uh, create a lot of inductance uh, so you can kind of see that this wire that's wrapped around it acting as an inductor over the top of it is to keep whatever inductance that is occurring uh, from your your AC line or essentially your DC that you're developing to keep it from radiating out into the RF section of your your radio uh, so you have AC coming in in your rectifier right being rectified to a, a DC we have these four filter electrolytic capacitors here three excuse me uh, there is a fourth one but it's where is it at right over here that's the fourth one that I'm thinking of but um, and of course you see that one side comes from your uh, return or B minus and then through that capacitor to chassis ground okay now 0.2 microfarad is too high of a rating anyways so we will be putting uh, x to y to uh, safety rated cap in here at, at a much lower value now the question is do we need to keep those wrappings and I don't think we do uh, based off the construction material of these old capacitors uh, the newer one that I'll be using will not have that inductance issue per se um, but you know we'll, we'll just replace this with a 
X2, Y2 rated safety cap. However, if need be being, uh, I will keep that old capacitor and the, the wraps that are around it are around it. And when we test out the radio, if we do have some issues, um, then I can gut that old capacitor and probably put that new one inside of it. Somehow get it to fit inside. We'll figure out something there. At least that's uh, where my thoughts are currently at. No matter what, though, it's, uh, it's time to get back to work. And so we'll be back uh, after I get more work done. Day two. Our Motorola 65L11. 6.2 radio. Gotten a lot of the paper film capacitors replaced. Several of the resistors that were out of tolerance. I'll be working my way over to this section, which should be a bit trickier. Um, I have two resistors that were measuring outside of 10%. Now, I did find out that, uh, you know, with one, uh, while I was in circuit, it was measuring outside 10%. Uh, but when I removed a leg, it was measuring just fine. So it's probably in parallel with a capacitor or something was affecting that reading. So I'm just going to show, like, even if you do it in circuit resistors, uh, sometimes you do have to at least remove a leg out of circuit to get a true reading. But anyways, uh, a couple of paper foils, one electrolytic here, and then three electrolytics down in that can. Maybe I'll try to restuff the can, I, can I'm not too sure yet. Um, so we've got at least one, two, three, four, six, seven more capacitors to replace. And like I said, this one, I'm just going to pull out and save. And then uh, if, if need be, we can gut it. But, uh, be putting the X two Y two rated safety cap in its place. Hopefully, the switch here between uh, battery and and AC is functional. The radio will turn on. There's a little switch right here in the corner. It allows you to cycle between those two things. I think inconvenient though. You have to pull out the chassis and open it up just to be able to make that change. I suppose it is what it is. Um, yeah, I might have to work on wiring up our new AC plug at the same time just because of where we're at and how convenient it is. But that's the plan moving forward, at least for right now. Okay. Recap. Job has been done. The resistors that need to be replaced have been replaced. Uh, our new lines cord has uh, been installed, although I ran it through a different hole than what it was previously because I uh, would have chafed the uh, insulation running it through this hole. But we zip tied it to give it a bit of strain relief or whatever you want to call it. But uh, I feel like this is ready for a power-up, at least a first attempt power-up. Hopefully everything works out fine. And then we can drop an antenna on it and do an alignment. So I'll put on our knobs. And we can see how it behaves. I'll get the, uh, the bottom put back on it, and uh, we'll get the tubes, their shieldings, put it back into it, and we'll pair it, power it up on the very act. All right, first initial power up test. And I went ahead and just put in an external AM loop antenna uh, to see if we'll get any reception. I highly doubt it. This whole thing's probably going to need an alignment. But when you power it up, keep an eye. We'll set this to about 70. So let's turn this on. Okay. Go ahead and switch 
this on. And so far, she's looking good. hearing anything come out of the radio yet. Let's get it up to uh, 70. Get her up to 100. Got her up to 120. Hold on a second. getting any filament. Give it a minute. had my rectifier and uh, my power tube uh, swap backwards so we'll try this again and start bringing it up We've got some filament. That's good. Not getting anything from the speaker. Let's give it a bit to warm up, see what happens. So I'm waiting for these big electrolytes just discharge a bit but um while i was checking our voltages and probing around a little bit i noticed that uh let's see we're a bit high on pin four and pin eight but here's the deal when we look at pins three and four on our other tubes we should be getting, uh, you know, around 80 something volts, but we're not, we're getting 168 volts DC, almost twice the voltage that we're supposed to have, which leads me to believe that, um, you know, as we follow this, the regulated DC we have is we have these, uh, Basically, these resistors that are supposed to drop the voltage is 3300. 
ohm resistor here and it's 225 2550 ohm resistor here it's filament drop resistor these are called high power dissip dissipation but uh, it's quite possible these are the suspect uh, I'll measure them here in a second mistakes eagle chasing your butt for several hours thinking there's a problem with these resistors here when in actuality you blew your power amplifier but uh, we're getting 88 now where we should be getting 88 so so I'll get this uh, currently alter it off uh, I got current limited extremely a whole lot right now but anyways rambling uh, we'll turn it on its bottom here in a second and test it out Okay, Dougie, let's turn this back up. So, it's pretty close to the line's voltage. Let's turn her on. And we got some crackle out of our speaker here. Yeah, it's gonna need uh going to need an alignment, but obviously in my office with all these LED lights and switch mode power supplies, you're gonna get quite a bit of interference, so Let's see about giving this thing an alignment. Trying something uh, a bit new. Instead of going to Moscope, I'm gonna go to uh, this guy up here. Alignment's pretty simple. 455 kilocycles out of here. I got set to 90% modulation with a 1K hertz tone. And we adjust T1, T2, T3, T4, whatever. T1, T2, trimmers, whatever they're called, for our IF. Then afterwards, we're going to set our SIGGEN to uh, 1620 kilohertz. And then we're going to adjust C3, which is this guy right here. Then we'll set this to 1400 kilohertz and then we're going to adjust oh sorry the first one was c3a so so that one second one will be c3b c3b which would be this guy close to here then we have our oscillator pattern adjustment 600 kilocycles it's going to be this alignment down here and we're just looking for a peak for me it's going to be whatever gets me closer to zero and then dropping the voltage down and re-peaking back up everything the last one's a little trimmer it's done at c3c so this back one um and you pretty much you don't do it 
you set your tuning control to 1400 kilocycles or kilohertz uh, and, and then from there you just tweak it till you get a better signal by ear so nothing nothing too uh, nothing too exciting about this all right what better way to finish it out got it all buttoned back together and everything than to have it fully completed hey baby my daughter's come in the yeah Motorola suitcase radio get it paired up with a nice temperamental coffee pot SMU is in play. SMU is a, that's a longer term play, right? You're, you're trying to get... This is a religious matter. We better hand this over to the to the religious crowd. So they had a an esteemed theologian. It's like the bulk of your radio stations are up in the higher kilohertz range. Well, I think just from a scheduling, you know, from a scheduling standpoint and logistics standpoint, it, I mean, it, it would be a massive undertaking. And I don't think they would. That's super touchy. You got to go slow to dollar in. Unless there yeah, I see that, baby. So it would have to be something with the Beamer press conference. Well, that's going to be it for this. Uh, uh, I think, uh, I, I think this repair if you have uh, enjoyed this video please consider subscribing if you're new to the channel give this video a thumbs up by all means leave some comments in the comment section 
pretty epic audio clip from last season. I uh, operate having fun repairs in the state of Oklahoma currently. So if you got vintage radio you're looking to get repaired, we can work out a price. This one not a full restoration. Uh, there's still a lot of work that I would do to this to get make it a uh, fully restored radio. The, uh, the tuning gang needs some work. Um, yeah, there's just quite a bit, but this was a get it working, not restoration. So we got it working, and it sounds uh, pretty good. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this. But anyways, if you're interested in the business side of thing, link in the doobly-doo takes you to my Google site. Uh, and also, I've uh, been teaching uh, electronics principles and fundamentals of electrical engineering over on my Patreon, as well as test equipment, link in the description. If you want to be a Patreon member that helps support this channel and get something back for it, uh, by all means, please consider joining the Patreon. And if you don't care about that and you just want to donate, there's that option to the uh, PayPal's in the, in the description as well. But anyways, this is uh, this has been the Motorola 65L11 suitcase style radio. Uh, be happy to get this back to the customer. Thank you for watching. Take care and goodbye. Mark?